So there, there you go. Boom. There you go. Fully upgraded S-Class Guppy. Look how small this thing is. It is so tiny. That is amazing. I love this thing. Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and today I'm going to show you how to get the smallest ship in the game. It is a Guppy Exotic, and it's an S-Class ship, by the way. And the cherry on top of all of that is it is a crashed ship, which means it's totally free. All you need to do is get to the system and find it for yourself. So, oh, by the way, this is future Jason. I totally forgot to tell you guys. All credit where credit is due. You know I'm always over on the NMS coordinates exchange over on Reddit. Always over there. And I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. This was actually found by Skulls Guitar 26 days ago. So Skulls Guitar over on the NMS coordinates exchange. He's the one who found it. All credit goes to him. So go over to the NMS coordinates exchange over on Reddit and show him some love. So I just want to make sure he gets the credit. I almost forgot to say that, but it's in there. So give him credit. He's the one who found it. Once you get there, all you have to do is jump into your starship and you're going to be looking for a specific set of coordinates, okay? So we're going to get up in the air and there should be a comm station over here in mine. But if you're looking for coordinates, all you do is hit your down on your D-pad, go all the way over to your gear icon, and then go into first person mode. That way you can see first person. And if you look over, it's usually gonna be on the left-hand side of your uh, ship. Whatever ship you're using. I'm using a fighter, so it's kind of set up differently if you're in an explorer or whatever. But if you see over here on this screen, you see it says uh, ch uh, Cheek ZR, and then I have a negative 47. 0.5, you know, whatever, and then a plus 160.50 right now. If you follow that, you will, you'll notice that it's changing. It's slowly changing, right? We're looking for the coordinates plus 62 and negative 14.93. So let me show you when we get there. Oh, it's on the dark side of the planet. All right, so we're getting really close to it, but as you can see, we're in the general area because our coordinates are plus 63 and negative 14 over on our uh, location right there, on our location screen. And so you know that this communication station is actually marking the guppy we need to go get, the smallest ship in the game. So I would say, hey, look for the uh, communication stations first. They, it depends on which uh, console you're playing on. I'm playing on PC right now, but it might show up for you. It depends on also if you're connected to the internet and all kinds of different factors in there. And sometimes communication stations don't even show up. So I would always say look for the communication station first, but secondarily, if you can, just go to plus 62.90 and negative 15.00. That is generally where it's going to be. I mean, it's right over here, as you can see. Right here. And look at how small this thing is. This thing is just big enough. Look at it. It's just the cockpit, basically. Just the round cockpit with the enough space for the wings. And the thrusters are barely there. Look at that. It's just, they're basically like exposed thrusters. I love it. Well, let's jump in here because I'm going to show you that this thing is an S-Class. And that is beautiful. Look at that. Boom. Now our th our launch thruster is not broken, but our pulse engines are, and our shield are is, and so you're gonna want to fix those before you take off. You don't have to. You could totally just take it and, you know. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is you're only allowed to have six starships at once. You're gonna only have a total of six. So right now I have five in my inventory. So I get two options. I get swap which means I'm going to trade it for whatever starship I have here. I don't want to trade my golden vector, but you can also just claim it, and it's absolutely free, and it becomes part of your fleet. Now, remember, you can only have six of them, though. But now it's mine, the Bard of Fire. Yes. Now, see, it's going to tell you, hey, all this stuff is broken. you got to fix it. Let's go into our menu. We can totally fix that. So our pulse engine, we need a hermetic seal and metal plating. You should have that by now. So that recipe should be pretty easy. Where's my hermetic seals at? Did I go buy it yet? Oh, I probably missed it. Um, 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 and... Take me, give me a second. Okay, right here. Hermetic seal, you need 30 condensed carbon. We got that. And then for our metal plating, you just need 50 ferrite dust. Got that as well. So let's do that. 
And that. Boom. Done. Now you hear that, like, thwumping sound? That means your shield is broken, so you're gonna need 50 chromatic metal and 13 sodium nitrate to fix that. Let's do that. And that. Now our shield is fixed. And you can, you can go through and fix all of this stuff. Now, because it's an exotic, they have a smaller inventory to start out with, but you could always upgrade this thing to be the biggest inventory in the game as well. So, we need paraffinium and pugnium. We have that. Let's just fix what we can while we're here, which makes it easier. Metal plating. Let's get some metal plating going here. Let's make a uh, nine. So, we're going to need some phosphorus, metal plating, and we're going to need some... Uh, Pyrite, we got that. Now, don't worry, if you don't have any of this stuff, you can always go to the space station and buy these materials at the space station for money. Platinum, most of those space stations will have this stuff already. So actually, you know what? Let's go and do that real fast. But yeah, this is my guppy. Now look at look at this. We're gonna go. Well, well, actually, first, let's look around the cockpit. It's rounded because it's an orb uh exotic, so of course the cockpit is all rounded. Look at this thing. I like it. So if you're in VR, this is what the cockpit looks like. But let's go over to uh, third person. I like doing that because it glitches out a little bit. Now look at this. Oh, we need to change this sun to there. Look at how small this thing is. That is a tiny, tiny ship. Let's get out into space because then we can really see what's going on here. Now we can see this thing. Look at this tiny little guppy right here. Look at him. So tiny, so small. All right. Now let's go over here to the... Wow, that's a red planet over there. We're going for the space station. That way we can buy some materials so we can fix our uh, guppy all the way up. And I'll show you guys. It's going to be amazing. Had to go into third person, because look at this thing. It's so small. Wings come up. There you go. And yeah, look at this tiny little ship. It's the smallest one in the game. I love it. So, we're going to need to fix this. So, here we go. We're going to look at all the other stuff. Chromatic metal and wiring loom. You can buy wiring loom here and chromatic metal. You'll be able to buy it from some of the uh, pilots that come in and land. Oxygen and dioxide. You might be able to find dioxide. That might be a hard one to come by. If not, you can go to a cold planet and get the dioxide. And there you go. Pure ferrite and gold. You can totally get that stuff here. You can buy it. Activated copper. That's going to be the hard one. You see, I don't even have any activated copper. We're going to ignore that for now. We have magnetized ferrite. And uh, chromatic metal, of course, and gold. Let's do uh, paraffinium and pugnium again. There you go. Uh, we're going to need some chlorine as well. We could buy chlorine. So let's do that while we're here because I don't have any on hand. And then in your technology, you have all, all of these ones. Activated copper again. Uh, wiring loom and antimatter. I can make some antimatter, actually. So let's make some antimatter while we're here. Boom. So antimatter should be easy. Oh, I need three of them. Dang it. Three, there we go. Done, done. Chromatic metal, pugnium, and platinum. You can buy all of those items here. A uh, pyrite, phosphorus, and metal plating. The pyrite and the phosphorus might be hard to get, but again, if you want phosphorus, go to a hot planet, a, a fire planet. And pyrite, you're gonna be able to, you should be able to buy, but you can also turn gold. You can refine gold into pyrite. And then we have chromatic metal and wiring loom. Let's do that. So we are basically good. Oh, yeah, we have to fix our hyperdrive as well since we're here. We need three microprocessors. Okay, so we need microprocessors. We need uh, chlorine and we need activated copper. So that is going to be hard to come by. But hey, let's talk to one of these guys. Let's see if they have any stuff we need. Chlorine for sure. And we need microprocessors. So let's buy some items. He has microprocessors. Let's buy five. And then do you have any chlorine or salt? I'll take salt as well. No salt or chlorine because we can refine 
uh, salt into chlorine. Nope. That's okay. He doesn't have it, but someone else might. Let's talk to this geck over here. Hey, man, you got any cool chlorine for me? Uh, no, nothing here, nothing here. Chlorine, there you go. And I think we only need, like, ten. Now, you know what? We're gonna buy two thousand. We don't need to buy that much. I think we only need ten, but I can use that later on, so I'm gonna keep that on hand. There we go. So we have most of what we need. We just need the, the activated copper. So, yeah, we only needed ten chlorine. Wow, and I bought two thousand. So I'll be able to bank the rest of it. And microprocessor's there, so there is our chromatic metal and our microprocessor. Good to go. Everything's all nice and comfortable. I like it. So while we're here, you can also upgrade the capacity of the inventory on your starship as well. So let's head on over here. And we're going to do the upgrade starship. Now, because it has a small inventory, it'll start out relatively cheap and what i mean by relatively is it only cost eight eight million but that price will go up really high once you get it to the maximum number of inventory slots so let's go apply augmentation since i already have augmentations saved up supply one two there you go and you can just expand this out to be huge yeah Let's keep going. Now, it's going to kick you out when you finally, you know, like, like clean up all the random open spots. It'll kick you out. But you can still keep upgrading it, though. So don't worry about that. You can still upgrade this thing all the way up. Since it's a, look at that, 14 million now. And it just keeps increasing over and over. I think the most expensive inventory slot is the last one. And it costs 300 million to do. So I will show you guys how much that thing is going to cost. We'll do the technology first. You can get 21 max, max uh, inventory slots in your uh, technology inventory. So as you can see, we're almost at 21 now already. 20 and 21. Boom. And you can also, you see, it's kind of faintly outlined already. But that's as far as you can go. And that's as big as all the inventories get for your starship. So let's keep going. And it gave us two of these free ones down here. Did you see that? I opened up this last slot, and all of a sudden, these two just appeared. That is pretty awesome. They just randomly give you two free slots. And we're, we're going to do that one, and boom. So we have one more left over. Let me show you how much that last one costs. So let's see. The Bard of Fire. I like the name of that. And uh, upgrade the ship. It costs 300 million bucks to upgrade it. So you definitely want to go the uh, apply augmentation route. But, I mean, if you're low on cash, do your, your storage upgrades first through buying it and then use whatever, uh, you know, uh, apply augmentations you have. So if you only have, like, five augmentations, you want to pay for it first because it's cheaper to begin with. And then do your augmentations last. I have plenty of augmentation, so I'm not too worried about it. So now we are at maximum, and as you can see, let me go back in here, it'll show you, hey, that's the maximum number. You can't go any higher than that. Apply augmentation, and max storage reached. So this is the biggest storage you can get in the game, and that's for any ship at all. Any ship, that's what you can get. So it'll be 48 in your general, and 21 in your technology inventory. So we need to go find some activated copper. Let's see if we have any in this system. If we don't have any in this system, I already got some. I farmed out, but I can show you guys how to get it. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. Perfect. Activated copper right here in the system. So all you have to do is land on the uh, planet, and we can go find some activated copper. Let's do that. And I'm going to be looking for some shiny parts of the terrain because when the uh, deposits load up, like right down there, you see how it's shiny right here? I don't know if this is activated or not. It could be regular, but who knows? It is a deposit, though, so let's land right here. Whoa! Okay, landed right on... The, came out on the tree. 
so. And this is a uranium deposit. Dang it, it's not the one we want. I mean, uranium is good for fuel, but we don't want uranium right now. We need to find activated copper, which is really hard to find. Where is it? Magnetized ferrite? I know it's extreme. And so any kind of an activated element, so you'll see activated copper, activated uh, cadmium, activated indium, anything that is activated, it has to be on an extreme planet. And so vice versa, if you're looking for an extreme planet, scan a planet and if it has anything activated on it, that means that there is extreme weather on the planet. Well, let's go find some more uh, deposits. Let's get out of here. We're gonna go find some more land to uh, go farm. Activated copper right there, perfect. Found that that was actually pretty easy. It only took us a couple minutes to find it. And it's so good that there's an activated copper uh, planet in the system, so you could fully upgrade and fix this starship within the same system. You could buy any of the resources you're missing, and you, because activated copper, they really don't sell that at any space station, you could totally just come over here and farm it yourself. So let's get some of that. Come on, I'm really doing some bad uh, shoulder thrusting. Terrain manipulator. Oh yeah, and also, by the way, an extra tip for you. If you hit left and right bumper or R1 and L1 on your controller, look at how big that is. It gets bigger and smaller. Look at that. See, it's a small one right here. And it gets bigger and bigger. So the key is, the bigger the orb is, the bigger the uh, circle is, the faster you'll dig, but that it just doesn't give you any resources. Like, it makes a big old hole, but it only gave me three silicate powder. But if you make it really small... It'll go really, it'll take you a lot longer, but you get a lot more resources. Look at that. Just that little tiny hole gave me 16 silicate powder. This gigantic hole only gave me three. So that's why you want to use a smaller one if you're mining resources like this. Use your smaller uh, orb on your train manipulator. The other downside is it will use a lot more fuel from your terrain manipulator. So it'll use a lot more fuel, but you get a lot more resources out of it. So it's totally worth it. The bigger the orb, the less fuel it uses, and the faster it goes. But you don't get any resources. Or you, you should, you do get resources, but not nearly as many as if you were just to use a small one. Oh, radioactive supercell. Great. Great timing on that. We should be almost there. I'm going to say 150 is what we needed. Let's go back before we melt in this super storm. Come on. And we, we haven't actually gotten any upgrades for our starship. And so there's nothing really we can, you know, we can't teleport our items over there. Oh, come on. And I'm afraid I'm going to run out of fuel because I haven't really refueled the launch thruster either. Let's get in here. There we go. So now we can totally fix that. So there we go. Activated copper, 75. And then our last one is in here. Activated copper 75. So you only need 150 activated copper to get this thing. So there, there you go. Boom. There you go. Fully upgraded S-Class Guppy. Look how small this thing is. It is so tiny. That is amazing. I love this thing. It is so cool looking. It's blue and gold. One of the coolest ships ever. So if you're looking for this thing, we're about to uh, show you the address. Hopefully you guys liked the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. So if you want the address for this smallest ship in the game, I got it for you right here. So make sure to find your portal as always and make sure you always have all the glyphs. If you don't know how to do that, link up top or down below in the description. But yeah, go to your portal. We're gonna activate it. Come on. And then these are the glyphs you're going to be using to go to the system. Now remember, you have to be in the Euclid galaxy, the beginning galaxy, the starter galaxy, all right? And you're going to be using the uh, weird face right here. The bird. The black hole. The beetle. The sunrise or sunset. The hot air balloon. 
the starship, the moon, the beetle, the boat, the beetle, and the beetle again one more time. So yeah, and you know, always, you know, again, I don't want to re-emphasize this just because I want to make sure everyone remembers it. There's always someone who comments that something happened. So, make sure you're in the Euclid Galaxy, the starter galaxy. And then, yeah, turn off your multiplayer. So, go to your options. Go to your network settings. And make sure your multiplayer is disabled. That way, no one can swoop into your game and then steal it from you. So, make sure your multiplayer is turned off. And that's how you get in there. 